Passion Sport and The 17 minutes past eight. Let's turn now to sport. We've been talking a lot about the All Blacks recently, who are undoubtedly some of our most famous athletes. But it's the controversial stars that have got marketing expert Jessica Vredenberg's thinking, more specifically whether the bad boys of the sports world, like tennis player Nick Kyrgios, can sell a sport or if they're actually bad for business. She joins us with more Morena. Good morning. This is so interesting. So interesting. tell us first about your study. Uh, so with one of my colleagues at AUT, Marilyn Giroux, we are looking at um, basically the effect of uh, sort of bad boys or anti-heroes as we're kind of referring to them on, on sports. So the effect of, um, of these types of personalities and whether they can be uh, good for sport and in particular looking at their effects for brands and for sponsorship, sponsorship relationships. So if brands and sponsors actually want to engage with athletes that potentially have um, more controversial types of images, what might be some of the benefits or might by, what might be some of the risks that they would be um, potentially incurring by, by doing that. So if we look at brands, mm -hmm. as separate from the, the sports themselves, so mm -hmm. the brands being the sponsors, uh, it is an anti-hero quite good for business? It can be. Um, in terms of the, the sport you mean being in it, or the, the athlete being an anti-hero? Mm -hmm. It kind of comes down to in what way. So what what is sort of the bad behavior, if you will? So, you know, we're not what we're looking at is more about, um, you know, meltdowns on court, um, emotional outbursts, those sorts of things. Of course, there's plenty of athletes who've done terrible things, criminal offenses. That's not what we're right. what we're sort of looking at. But it's more tantrums. Yeah. You know, things that that um, that might make them, you know, some people perceive to be a little bit more relatable. You know, they also kind of deal with emotion and emotions. It also is something that, um, you know, at the end of the day, professional sport is also a bit about entertainment, right? So it makes them entertaining, it makes them engaging, it makes them different and unique. And that's also something that kind of comes into um, into marketing, sort of marketing 101, it's about differentiation and what's your what's your unique sort of selling um, feature. So for so, for some of these athletes, that can be part of what um, what comes into play. But um, you know, bad boys have to earn their stripes. You still have to be performing yes. on the field. You know, if you're not doing well, it's it's not really going to sell. <laughs> so let's look at Nick Kyrgios because he's, for obvious reasons, someone that you focused some mm. of your study on. Mm. His behaviour is terrible. He throws tantrums every single time he's on the court, but he's still got sponsors. Yeah, yeah. Um, Nick Kyrgios is an, is an interesting case, I think. Um, he does, he does have a certain appeal in terms of uh, that sort of those bad boy characteristics in terms of, like I said before, people being able to relate to him. But especially in the sport of tennis, it's also just that it's so different from what the traditions are. It's quite a, um, a rule-based, a rule-focused sport. Um, traditionally, you know, your uh, top athletes have been, it's very respectful and everything, so he does things a little bit differently, which of course rubs some people the wrong way, but others actually find that to be quite refreshing. Mm -hmm. And and also um, for a sport like tennis that's maybe a bit more traditional, is potentially appealing to a new generation and bringing in some new fans, um, refreshing a little bit. So in that sense, you could argue that it's, it's good for the sport and maybe um, also for the brands that are affiliated with him. But um, at the end of the day, he is, he's polarizing and that's, that's part of it as well. He's always you know, in the media, he's in the news all the time. Oh, nice. We're all talking about him, exactly. exactly. Often when he does, as you always say, chuck a tanty. Um, you don't necessarily remember who won the match, but you remember, you know, Kyrgios is who we're talking <laughs> His about. His record got broken. Or right, something. right. The thing about Nick is he's playing for himself, so mm. it doesn't matter if he upsets someone really. Um, it's, it's his own game that mm. he's sort of throwing uh, the cat amongst the pigeons in. What if you play for a team? So you, you've got an All Black, say, and, and right. you've got one person who, who's throwing tantrums at the ref all the time. What yeah. happens then? That's a great point. I mean, Nick, it, it, it is an individual sport. I suppose Australia would, would claim that he's, he's playing for them and they, they sometimes feel the, um, the, the negative kickback from his behavior, but definitely there's a difference, I would say, between team and individual sports. Um, on a team, you're potentially letting others down with your actions, people that you play with, and then as a result, I think fans tend to be a little less forgiving or, or encouraging of that behavior because it is affecting different people. Um, so I think that the team versus the, the individual aspect is, is, is distinguishing that, that on a team it's, there's maybe less room for that kind of behavior. Absolutely. You've got to be a team player, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Jess Freidenberg uh, from AUT. Thank you. Fascinating. Yes, appreciate your visits.